Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Understanding Price Action to Make More Informed Trading Decisions. My name is Samantha Maybe and I'm Recognia's Marketing Program Specialist. I'll be hosting today's webinar. With me is Mr. Peter Ashton, Recognia's Vice President of Client Services. Also joining us is Chris Daniels, Senior Product Manager for BMO InvestorLine. First off, I'd like to thank you for joining us. We have some great content to share with you. We will begin momentarily, but first I wanted to go over a couple of things. First, we will be addressing any questions you might have at the end of the presentation. If you do have a question, please feel free to send it along at any time by choosing Question and then Send on the right-hand panel of your screen. If you have or experience technical difficulties, please try logging out and signing back in. We also find that in some locations, the phone line works better than the VoIP line, so please check your sound quality and just in the right-hand panel accordingly. At that, let us begin. I will now pass things over to Peter Ashton. Peter? Well, thank you, Samantha. It's a pleasure to be speaking to you today. Uh, in this session, we're going to talk about how you can use price action to make more informed trading decisions. And before I begin my presentation, a quick disclaimer with you. I'd like to emphasize that all the examples of stocks we're going to look at in this presentation are all just for educational purposes. They're examples only. None of these should be construed as advice to buy, sell, or hold any security being discussed. So with that, let's talk about the agenda. So in this presentation, I'd like to just give you a little bit of background on who Recogni is and what we do. And I'm going to assume that people on the call have varying levels of expertise in terms of technical analysis. Some of you may be using technical analysis in your trading today, in which case I can tell you how you might be able to do it better using Recognia. And there may be some of you who are just getting started with technical analysis or maybe have no background in technical analysis at all. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background on how technical analysis might be used to supplement your trading. And then the majority of the time in this webinar, we're actually going to spend looking at how to use the Recognia Technical Insight tool on BMO Investor Line. So we'll do that through an interactive demo. And we'll cover three main use cases. We'll talk about how to uncover new investing opportunities, how to validate an idea you already have, and how to help manage your risk. And at the end of the presentation, we'll uh, have an interactive question and answer session. So to begin, who's Recognia? So Recognia is the industry leader in providing what we call actionable investment research for self-directed investors and traders such as yourself. Our products seek to automate the investment decision-making process, thereby allowing you to cover more ground than you'd be able to on your own. And we recognize that every trader is also a student, so we try to present our research through a guided and interpreted experience. Recognia has been at this for over 10 years, and we understand the needs of self-directed investors and traders very well, and we've actually won a number of awards for our technical analysis products. So the product we're going to talk about today is called Technical Insight. And the aim of Technical Insight is to automate the standard practices of technical analysis and chart pattern recognition. So that's a very, very important statement. So we're not promising that we've invented some new secret sauce or some um, proprietary analytics. We're really automating the practices of technical analysis that you'd read about in any book. And by doing that, we're going to allow you to cover more ground than you would be able to show you how you can use this capability to uncover opportunities, find out what's poised to move, validate your decisions, what does the price action tell me, and help manage your risk by tuning into signs of strength and weakness. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of the technical analysis um, baseline information you may need to know. So technical analysis at its core is really all about looking for patterns and relationships in the price and volume history of securities. And if you think about it, every trade that takes place on an exchange represents an agreement between a buyer and a seller for what is the fair price of that security at that time. And that fair price reflects everything that's known about the stock at that moment. So it reflects the fundamentals, it reflects the news, it reflects uh, the overall sentiment in the market toward that company or the market in it factored into the price at that moment in time. So by studying the price, we can actually understand the balance of supply and demand in the market and use that to assist us in our decision making uh, as part of our trading. For those of you who are just getting started with technical analysis, I'd like to talk about a, a great book called Technical Analysis of Stock Trends by Edwards and McGee. This is as close as there is to a Bible in, of technical analysis. This book actually came out in the 1950s and it's currently in its eighth edition. There's a great quote from this book I'd like to use just for a moment. And Edwards and McGee said, the market price reflects the hopes and fears and guesses and moods 
rational and irrational of hundreds of potential buyers and sellers. Price is the only figure that counts. So Edwards and McGee believed that by studying the price, you basically were studying all the different inputs that buyers and sellers were using to evaluate what the fair price of a stock was at a given moment in time. So price was the only figure to them that mattered. So here's an example. Um, this is a company called Me. You know, where it trades on NASDAQ, and you can see that it had a bit of a wild ride over the 12-month period we're showing here. So there's a period of time, about two months, where it didn't really do anything, and there's a great big rally and a huge decline, great big rally, huge decline, and kind of a consolidation period where it did nothing for three or four months, and then a huge rally where it actually rallied from about $10 up to over $30 here. Well, wouldn't it have been nice to know that this consolidation period here represented a great time for you to be building your position to be poised for this big run-up? Well, in fact, that is what technical analysis can do for us. So if you're a technical analyst, you would basically look at this chart and say, there's a certain pattern that's formed here called the head and shoulders bottom. So this is a very uh, important pattern in technical analysis called the classic pattern. And you can see here we have the left shoulder outlined in red. This is called the head. And then the right shoulder here on the right-hand side. And this horizontal red line across is called the neckline of the pattern. This represents a, a line of resistance to the price of the stock. You can see the stock price bounced off that a couple times before actually breaking through. So when we break through that neckline, that confirms the pattern and indicates a bullish trend in the future. And in fact, if we look what happened immediately after that, the stock price ran up from you know, 10 or $12 to approximately $30. So this would have been a great time to have built your position in NeoWare. Now, although Edwards and McGee say that price is the only figure that matters, um, most investors want to use technical analysis in conjunction with other kinds of research, and we think that's a very prudent thing to do. So most of you are probably familiar with fundamental research, which involves various data that you use to evaluate the intrinsic value of the company. And that would be in counting ratios like price to earnings ratio and price to sales ratio and so on. It might be things like analyst ratings, uh, earnings forecasts for the company, um, what consumers are saying in the marketplace. So technical analysis makes a really nice complement to fundamental research for a variety of reasons. So you're going to use technical analysis to understand things like support and resistance levels and what are the technical events driving the stock price, what are the various overbought and oversold indicators that are in play. Unlike fundamental research, which is updated really only quarterly when the company releases its, um, its reports, technical analysis is updated every day because it's based on the price movement of the stock in that particular day. So technical analysis is a great complement to the fundamental research you may already be using. So let's move on. Let's talk about what are some of the classes of technical events that are, are used um, by technical traders. And there are kind of three basic classes we like to talk about. So the first are called short-term patterns. And these are based on the shape and relationship of candlestick or price bars. I'm going to, understand, I'm going to assume everybody in this webinar understands what a candlestick or, or price bar is. Um, we also have classic patterns and indicators and oscillators. But let's start with the short-term patterns. So here's an example of a very well-known short-term pattern called the hammer. So you can see this is a chart of First Health Group. Particular bar here, this is what's called a hammer. So it kind of looks like a hammer. There's a hammer head at the top and a long handle that comes down. So if you think about this particular candlestick, this is telling us that the stock opened up here near the highs of the day. During the day, it traded way down here was able to rally back and close near the, near the place where it opened, near the high of the day. So what does that say about who's in control of the stock this day? Is it the bulls or the bears? Well, clearly it's the bulls because the stock price opened high, it declined way down, the bears took it much lower, but they weren't able to hold it. And the bulls caused the stock to rally back and close near its highs. This is very much a bullish pattern. This is a bullish candlestick. So this indicates a reversal to come. We've had a very steep decline in this particular stock price. This is a reversal pattern to indicate that a bullish trend may be on the verge of starting. Now, of course, if you're actually to use the hammer in your trading, you're not going to have the benefit of knowing what comes next. So you're basically going to see this pattern occurring after a long decline, and you're going to have to have some conviction that this is a reversal pattern, and the, the trend now is, is likely to reverse to bullish. Now, the converse of the hammer is called the shooting star. So shooting star is also a reversal pattern, but it's a bearish reversal. So again, let's think about this shooting star here. It kind of looks like a shooting star. It's got a head here and a long tail behind it. So what this tells us is that the stock opened near the lows of the day. It rallied higher, but was unable to hold those highs, and it closed again back near the lows. So that clearly indicates the bears are in control of that market. 
And the, these two particular shooting stars, you can see the price actually declined immediately following that shooting star. Now, incidentally, people ask, you know, does it matter whether the real body here is, is white or black? These are both hammers. One has a black body, one has a white body. It doesn't actually matter whether the body is black or white, although a white-bodied hammer is considered more bullish and a black-bodied shooting star is bearish. So those are short-term patterns, and let's talk about the next class, which are called classic patterns. So we saw one of those examples already, which was the head and shoulders bottom. So classic patterns are uh, particular shapes that occur in the, um, the price patterns of stocks, and those shapes are considered to have meaning. So the head and shoulders bottom is probably one of the best known ones. Again, this is a reversal pattern, and you can see what happened here. This particular stock, fuel cell energy, was in a long decline over a number of months, and you can see this very tight channel coming into that decline. So this channel, by the way, represents a dynamic level of support and resistance. This is the resistance line here, and this is the support line here. And you'll see that that line was approached, for example, the support line was approached many times without actually being penetrated. We move into the head and shoulders bottom, the support and resistance has now changed. So in fact, the new resistance line becomes this neckline, where the price approaches or touches several times, but is unable to break through. And finally, when we do break through, that indicates a new bullish trend is now beginning. So this is one of the more significant classic patterns that technical analysts will use. And I should mention that head and shoulders bottom or any classic pattern is really meaningless until the price is confirmed. So until we actually break through this uh, neckline, this is not a valid pattern. Um, if we actually were looking right here as the last price, that would not be a head and shoulders bottom yet and has no real meaning in technical analysis until the that event is actually confirmed. Now the great thing about classic patterns is they can tell us something about what might happen to the price next. So what technical analysts tend to do is they'll look at the height of the pattern. So we're going to measure from the neckline to the lowest point of the head and we're going to add that price to the confirmation price here. And that gives us a new target price or an expected move that we want to see from this, uh, this particular pattern. We can also derive a trading horizon from this pattern by measuring the length. So from the time we cross the neckline going in to the time we cross the neckline coming out, that is called the trading horizon. And if we add that to the confirmation date, that gives us a sense of about how long we think it's going to take to reach the target price. Now these are just rules of thumb, and of course sometimes the price goes higher, sometimes it doesn't quite achieve the target price, sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it takes shorter, but it's a rule of thumb in terms of what might happen based on this particular pattern. So the last class of events I'd like to talk about are indicators and oscillators. And these are based on uh, moving averages and various kinds of mathematical functions. And for those of you who are trading with technical analysis today, these are probably the kind of events that you're most familiar with. Uh, things like MACD or a double moving average crossover and so on. And the reason why these are you know, probably the most well known is because they're the most common. Um, if you look at just about any site that allows charting, there's some kind of technical analysis involving MACD or moving averages or something like that. These are just arithmetic. They're very, very easy to calculate. That's why you tend to find them just about everywhere. The short-term patterns, and especially the classic patterns, are very, very hard to detect in an automated way, which is why you don't tend to find them on very many uh, technical analysis sites, although they do tend to be very significant from the perspective of understanding where the price movement may be going. So here's an example of a stock, um, a stock chart for Hewlett Packard, and we have two different moving averages overlaid on here. We have in red the 200-day simple moving average, and in blue the 50-day simple moving average. So a simple moving average at its core is just basically taking the closing price for, say, the last 50 days of the stock's price, we add those 50 closing prices together, divide by 50, that gives us today's value for the simple moving average. Now for tomorrow, we're going to throw out the oldest day, add on the latest closing price, and do that all over again to get the next value of the SMA. Um, now if you look at these two particular simple moving averages, the red SMA is interesting because it performs basically a, a level of resistance to the stock price. You notice how the stock, this, this line is actually approached or touched several times without actually being violated. So this is actually a very, very good indicator of where future resistance to the stock price may be. So beyond the end of this stock chart, if this actually starts getting close to this line again, you might think it may bounce off again. The 50-day SMA, on the other hand, in this particular case, tends to form a nice trading signal for this particular stock. 
So if we look at where we cross the 50-day SMA in the upward direction, that tends to be a bullish signal. In fact, when we cross in that direction, you can see the stock goes on to rally. When we cross in the downward direction, the stock goes on to decline. So if you were just trading this one particular signal on Hewlett Packard, uh, you probably would have done okay because you would have ridden up the stock here and you would have been short here. You would have ridden up here and been short here. So simple moving average can be very useful uh, trading indicators. So we've talked very briefly about some short-term patterns. We've talked about hammers and shooting stars. We've talked um, on classic patterns about the head and shoulders bottom. And we've talked about price crossing the moving average as a, a nice uh, indicator and oscillator event. But of course, there's many, many more technical events that are used in technical analysis. And that is where Recognia can help you. So Recognia detects not just those few events that I talked about in the previous charts, but in fact 65 different kinds of technical events. And we don't just detect that on one or two stocks. In fact, we analyze every single stock in Canada and the U.S. every day for all of these events. And that analysis is done for you overnight. So when you wake up in the morning, you can basically look at Recogni and say, what are the good, good investing opportunities for me today? We've already analyzed every stock for you. We can show you where the good investing opportunities are. So with that, I'd like to uh, switch over and, and do a little bit of a demo. And we're going to talk about how to use technical insight to do three things. We're going to look at how to use it to find new investing opportunities. We're going to look at it in terms of how you can validate an idea you already have. What does, the, uh, what does technical analysis say about the outlook for that particular stock? And we'll talk about how you can use it to help manage your risk. So with that, and I will just switch over and go to the BMO Investor Line site. And I'll show you how you can actually use technical insight available on BMO Investor Line. So there's actually two ways to get into the tool. Um, the first way is, is through the Quotes Plus page. So for example, any stock that I might, um, I might choose to look at, let's take Enbridge for example. Um, you can see at the top here we have a quote for Enbridge and a sm small thumbnail chart. You can see right here there's a, a tab at the top for Technical Insight. If I'm going to click that, that will actually take me into the technical event lookup for, um, for Enbridge. But the other way is right on this Tools tab here, you can see there's actually a tool called Technical Insight. So I can select that and get taken right into the tool that way. So what we're landing on right here is called the Overview page. So this is, um, this is where many of you will start using Technical Insight. So I'm going to talk first about how we can use Technical Insight to find some trade ideas. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's these two panels here. And these are called the Bullish and Bearish Featured Events. So as I mentioned, we've already scanned every stock in Canada and the U.S. And we're going to tell you what we think are the most interesting trade ideas of the day, both bullish and bearish. So for Canada, the five most interesting bullish events of the day are these five. The first one is a symmetrical continuation triangle on a company called Genworth MI Canada. Um, this particular event was confirmed on November 27th. That was yesterday. This is a short-term bullish event. The last price was 2075. And the target price, based on this classic pattern we've detected, is 2180 to 2210. The pattern duration is 15 days, and that gives you roughly the trading horizon for this opportunity. So in here, you've got the target price as well as the trading horizon to help make you decide, help you think whether this is an opportunity you want to act. Uh, the second most bullish event is Uniselect, which had a bottom triangle. Uh, Horizons North Logistic had a hammer. That's that hammer event we talked about and so on. So you can see there's five good trading ideas here for Canada and also five for the U.S. markets as well. So in the U.S. there's a symmetrical continuation triangle on Poly One Corp. Uh, Brocade had a double bottom. A double bottom is a very significant technical event and so on. Now in any market there are people who are bullish and people who are bearish. So if you happen to be more bearish right now, well here are five bearish trade ideas. So the most bearish technical event that we found in the Canadian market was for Talisman Energy, which had an engulfing line. Uh, Retrocom mid-market real estate had an engulfing line as well, short-term bearish event, and so on. So again, there's five good bearish events here on the Canadian market and five for the U.S. market. So I'll also show you that if I'm to actually click on one of these events, well, this one on um, Genworth MI Canada, this takes me to what's called the chart details page. This gives me more information particular technical event. So you can see we've got a, um, a price history for Genworth, and here's that particular symmetrical continuation triangle we talked about. So in red you can see it outlined how we touched these uh, two converging support and resistance lines, and the green dot shows you the date at which 
the event was confirmed. What you can also do, and what I actually advise you to do, is you can also turn on this thing called the target price region. I'll turn that on and say update the chart. And this will draw on here the target price region. This dark green is the target price. This is where this particular pattern indicates that the price may go. And the width of this rectangle will tell me about how long um, this pattern indicates it'll take to reach the target price. So this makes it very, very actionable. You can kind of see visually where things are likely to go. And if you want to see this, by the way, on every chart you look at, which I think is a good idea, you can go up here at the top and say save the page settings, and it'll remember that you actually want to see this particular um, target price region on all your charts. Let's go back to the, uh, the overview page again. So we talked about the featured events and how these are the events that Recogni has identified as being most bullish or most bearish. But the other way you can get some trade ideas is this tab called the most viewed. So rather than what Recogni thinks is interesting, these are the events that other users of Technical Insight happen to be researching. So a little bit of a, a community sentiment here. What are other Technical Insight users looking at and researching today? So for the Canadian market, the five most bullish most viewed events are these five. So for example, here I see RIM. So RIM had uh, price crosses the moving average event, uh, which occurred down on November 23rd. A class B, a relative strength index event, and so on. So you can also get some trade ideas, not just by you know, what Recogni thinks is neat, but what other users of the product are actually researching. Now the other interesting way that you can get some trade ideas is using what's called the technical event screener. So up here at the top you can see there's a navigator and I can click there, or there's actually a panel for it right here, but I'm going to click this one here. And there's, there's really two ways that you can use the screener. There's what's called the basic or preset mode, and there's what's called the advanced mode. So in the basic mode, we've we've essentially set up some common searches for you that you can just use. So if you click select the preset search, we can show you, for example, highly traded bullish stocks or stocks with a long-term bullish outlook, uh, stocks with a possible 15% increase. So if I click on that, for example, we'll show you a list of stocks which have had technical events that point to a target price that's 15% or more above where we are today. And by the way, all those presets are for the Canadian market. Now, if you wanted to do a more advanced search, you can go to what's called the advanced screener. And this lets you customize all different aspects of the search. So let's suppose, for example, you wanted to look at the U.S. market instead of Canada. You could pick the U.S. And if you wanted to find stocks in a particular sector, let's say the oil and gas sector, uh, and you wanted to look back over the last four weeks of trading, and you're interested in bullish classic patterns or short-term patterns only. That's, that's an example of a, a screener search you could use. So I can search on that, and I can actually get a list of stocks that will match that particular set of criteria. This is another way you can actually generate some, uh, some great trading ideas. So let's let this finish. Um, depending on the number of, um, of events to be pulled back, it can take you know, anywhere from a couple seconds to maybe 15 or so seconds to pull back um, all these events. This is taking longer than I thought. In any case, let's go, here's the, oh here it is finally here. So, Here's a whole list of events of companies trading on the U.S. markets in the oil and gas sector that have had bullish short-term patterns or classic patterns in the last four weeks. And incidentally, you'll notice there's a button here that says Trade Now. So if you energy group, you could actually click on that, and you get taken right into the, the BMO equity, equity order entry page. You could actually place your order directly from here. The next thing I'd like to show you is how you can use technical insight to validate an existing idea. So maybe you are very bullish on a particular stock or um, you heard about something on CNBC and you're thinking you want to do a little bit more research before you decide what you want to do. You can use the technical event lookup page to find out what's the technical perspective on that individual stock. So one stock that's in the news a lot these days is RIM. So let's just see what technical insight knows about RIM. So here's RIM, it's in the computer hardware and software electronics industry. Here are some competitors of RIM. And if you look down here, this is a, basically a summary of RIM from a technical analysis perspective. This is a two-year price history for RIM, and it's been all bad news for most of that two years. Um, you see these different red squares and green dots. Well, the red squares represent bearish events, and the green dots represent bullish events. So you can see there's been a big cluster of bullish events recently. And if I look down here, this is 
a list of active technical events in reverse chronological order. So newest events at the top and getting older and older as we go back. So you can see that most of the events going back to early October have been all bullish. And in fact, that has corresponded to a rise in the price of RIM from about 769 to about $10. And in fact, we look at the oldest one of these bullish events, the megaphone bottom. This occurred back on October the 1st. Um, basically, back in early October, nothing looked very promising for RIM. Um, it had been in a long, long decline, but there was this bullish pattern that occurred at the beginning of October, and you can see it pointed to a higher target price in the range of $8.90 to $9.20. And you can see we actually did achieve that target price in just about the target time frame that was uh, indicated by the pattern. Now, the other stock people always ask me to look up when I'm doing a demo like this is they say, do Apple. So let's go to the U.S. and let's type in Apple. And let's just see what technical insight has to say about Apple. So again, also Apple's got some interesting price action. Big run up, decline, another big rally back in uh, the early, early fall of um, 2012. But after that, it was kind of bearish for Apple. And Apple actually dropped about 200 U.S. dollars off its stock price in uh, uh, late September and early October. Um, so right now we're saying that for Apple, Recogni knows about 10 bullish and 9 bearish events. And we actually can let you sort these events by um, price horizon or target horizon. So we can group that into short-term events, events that are going to play out in roughly two to six weeks, intermediate-term events, which are events that will play out in six weeks to 39 weeks or nine months, and then long-term, which is more than nine months. And if you look at the summary view, that's an aggregation of all the different events uh, on the same screen. So again, looking back at Apple, it was, it's been very bullish recently. In fact, um, the first bullish event we had here was um, November 19th when the price was 565, and we've actually rallied to about 585 right now. Looking back a little bit further, you can see that we had some very bearish events in early October. There's a megaphone top, for example. There's a head and shoulders top on October the 8th. And if I pick that one, for example, um, this was an intermediate term bullish event, sorry, bearish event. Um, if you look at this particular event, let's let that finish. There's the head and shoulders top that we detected. This was confirmed on October the 8th, 2012. On the date this pattern was confirmed, Apple was trading at 638.17, and this target, so this pattern pointed to a lower target price of 590 to 601. You can see we actually blew through that and went actually a lot lower uh, in about half uh, the, uh, the pattern duration. So this one would have actually been a very interesting pattern to have had access to back in early October. Other thing I wanted to show you is how app or sorry how Recogni can help you with some of your risk management. So you'll notice here that there's some things about support and resistance and stop prices and so on. Let me go back to this um, this particular event here, head and shoulders top. For any event actually access some information on support and resistance. So understanding support and resistance is very, very important from a technical analysis perspective. So right now we're saying that Recogni sees support for this stock at 636.18, and we see resistance at 635.38. So the current price will always be in between these two lines. So what I can actually do is let's actually draw that on the chart and just see what it looks like. Now, right now, we're calculating support and resistance over 40 bars. Um, but what that actually shows us, this blue line is the resistance line, and the green line is the support line. So interesting that you know, we kind of bounced off that, um, that support line once, and kind of again here, that we did penetrate a little bit. And then the resistance line, we bounced off there. And um, that, yeah, so we had a little bit of a a flirtation with that resistance line here, that becomes the next level of resistance for the stock price. So Apple's really got nothing holding it back from rising until it reaches roughly 635. The other thing that we can do is we can look at what are called trailing stops. So whenever you enter a position in a stock, it's always good practice to think about how am I going to get out of this trade if it goes against me. So a very good practice is to put in a uh, stop order. But where to set that stop order is, uh, is often a little bit confusing. So what Recogni can do is help you with where the right place for that stop is going to be. So for Apple right now, we can calculate that trailing stop level in two ways. We can do a, what's called a percentage trailing stop. This is the old-fashioned way of doing stops. People who are devotees of the investor's business daily, for example, always talk about an 8% trailing stop. So in that case, an 8% trailing stop will put you at um, 567.67. 
But Recogni has another way of calculating trailing stops called the Recogni trailing stop. And this is a more sophisticated kind of stop in which we look at a long price history of the security and figure out what's the day-to-day -day volatility and then give you a stop level which is, a, is far enough away from the current price that the day-to-day -day volatility is not going to cause you to get stopped out. So if I actually use the Recogni trailing stop, it tells me that I would want to have my stop at 593.36, so a little bit a little bit closer to the current price than what the um, percentage trailing stop was suggesting. Okay, so we're kind of running out of time, so I want to cover a couple more quick things. I want to talk about the alerts. So one other way you can help to manage your risk is to talk about is to think about how to stay on top of your positions. So the alerts function of technical insight is one key way you can do that. So what the alerts will allow you to do is create alerts to tell you when either there are new investing opportunities or that there are technical events that are, that are impacting stocks that either you own or are interested in. So I can say I want to set up an alert. I can give it a name and it'll ask me what kind of alert do you want. So for example, if you wanted to have an alert to tell you when there was a technical event affecting one of the stocks in your portfolio, you could say I want a watch list alert. And this will basically allow you to type in a whole list of symbols and these would basically become watch list alerts for you um, and we would email you every day when there was actually a, uh, an event on one of these stocks. The other kind of alert is the um, opportunity alert or event alert. So if you're interested, for example, in um, investing opportunities in the oil and gas sector, you could set up an alert that would provide you every day with a list of trade ideas of stocks in that sector. So lots of different ways of using the alerts. And in fact, we tend to find that a lot of the real power users of technical insight almost exclusively through the alerts. Now, of course, I recognize that a lot of what we've talked about in this session may be, um, uh, may be advanced in terms of technical analysis knowledge for a lot of you who are listening and maybe are not technical traders today. But the one thing I wanted to leave you with is that we want to help you to become a better technical trader. And to do that, we have a significant amount of education built into this product. So by clicking the Education tab, you can get more information about all the different kinds of technical events that are part of technical insight. So for example, on all the different kinds of class patterns we cover here, there's lots and lots of different content available. So if I want to learn more about the bottom triangle, I can click on that particular event and well here's a description of the bottom triangle, here's what it looks like, here's the important characteristics of it, here's how to trade this particular pattern, here's the criteria that refute, criteria that support and so on. So lots and lots of different different um, content is available and in fact we do this for all the different types of events that are covered by technical insight. The classic patterns, the short-term patterns, the indicators and the oscillators. So you can actually improve your knowledge of technical events or technical analysis just by looking at the education content that's available in technical insight. And if you forget anything, everything else that I talked to you about today, I want you to remember the help button. So if you click this help button, we're going to give you the ability to access a getting started guide for technical insight. So basically a, a PDF document that will walk you through some of the details of how to use technical insight. And there are also video tutorials available. So three different tutorials covering the three use cases we talked about, finding trade ideas, validating ideas you already had, and managing your risk. And these, they're very short, three, four minutes long, but they can refresh your memory in terms of some of the things that we've actually talked about. We also have here some of the frequently asked questions. And if you have a question that you want to get an answer to, you can visit our help form and you can actually type in a question and have it answered by a Recogni expert. So with that, um, that's kind of a very quick overview of technical insight. I'd like to um, turn it back to Samantha and we can open up the floor for questions. Great. Thank you, Peter. So firstly, um, like I said, you can enter any questions into the um, right-hand panel. And if we can't get to your questions, we only have time for a few today, we will respond to you by email after the presentation. Um, the first question I'd like to address is a bunch of people asked if this presentation will be available afterwards. And the answer is yes. The session is being recorded and will be available through BMO um, in the next week or so. Uh, the next question we'll get to is, at what time are your charts updated at night? 
So great question. So we receive our, our market data from the Canadian and U.S. exchanges uh, soon after they close, so around 5 o'clock we get them. We do our analysis in the evening, and we're typically done the analysis by 10 p.m., so the alerts go out around 10 p.m., and the updated technical analysis on all the different stocks is available by around 10 p.m. at night. Great. Uh, the next question is, are your alerts sent real-time or delayed? So there's, there's really two different kinds of alerts we can talk about. There are uh, recognition alerts or event alerts. So for example, detecting an event on a particular stock, like a head and shoulders top or bottom. That analysis is done only once a day, and those alerts are going to be sent out at night. So get your alerts uh, during the night, and they'll be available to you in the morning when you wake up. Um, alerts that are based on the price of a stock can be sent intraday. Um, so they're sent with a 15 minute or 20 minute delay. Um, so if you, for example, set an alert to say, tell me when the price crosses a certain threshold, or tell me when the price of an instrument crosses a support and resistance line, we will send you those alerts uh, intraday, but the rest are all sent at the end of the day. The next question is, are Canadian ETFs covered? Uh, yes, they are. So this product covers Canadian stocks and ETFs, and in the U.S. we cover stocks, ETFs, and ADRs. Great. Um, can you explain short interest ratios, and is there a way to view this for a given stock? Uh, <laughs> I could explain it, but it's not one of the, um, the functions that's covered in Recognia. So we're not looking at um, those kind of metrics like short interest ratio, but I think you may be able to find that elsewhere on the, uh, the BMO Investor Line site. And what is the general track record for technical analysis? Um, well, I'll mention the technical analysis is a practice that has been around for not just 10 or 20 years, but in fact goes back over 400 years to the, uh, the futures markets of Japan. So it has been around for a long time, and the fact that people still practice it today indicates that there's certainly some lasting value there. In terms of quantitative information on the effectiveness of technical analysis, I'd probably point you to um, a very well-known study by a technical analyst named Martin Pring who actually studied many thousands of, uh, of price patterns and how effective they were at predicting the um, future price movements of stocks. This was actually published in Martin Pring's book called Martin Pring on Price Patterns. Uh, if anybody's interested in uh, getting a copy of that analysis, we can actually send that to you. So you could uh, either put a, uh, send us an email or put something in the question tool and we could uh, actually send you that uh, study. And regarding alerts, uh, can we configure to receive only certain types of events, like a certain type of pattern? Absolutely, you can. So the alerts are completely flexible. Um, just like I showed you in the technical event screener, you can say what kind of events you want to receive, whether you're interested in just classic patterns or just short-term patterns or just indicators and oscillators. That's all fully configurable as part of the alerts functionality. Great, thank you. Uh, we have one more on alerts. Um, just wondering if it's combined in one email or separate emails per stock. That would be sent in one email. So we would aggregate all the alerts for a given user and send it to you in one email at, in the middle of the night. Great, thank you. So we are running out of time. Uh, we still have some questions coming in. So like I'd said previously, um, we will get back to you via email. But uh, yeah, I'd just like to thank you very much again for joining us. And thank you, Peter and Chris, for joining us as well. And um, everybody have a good evening. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye now.